morning students we are learning water resource engineering and hydrology we are discussing on hydrological parameters wherein in today's lecture we will discuss about variability of precipitation and some of measurements for rainfall okay so we are starting the lecture with the first one that is the variability of precipitation okay now the distribution of precipitation it's not uniform in a particular region the precipitation may rise from region to region you cannot say the same distribution of precipitation in each and every regions okay so the precipitation region for any region that depends on few factors okay and those factors are first one that is the location of that particular region in a general circulation pattern the next factor that affect the uh, distribution of precipitation that is the latitude of that region and the distance from a moisture source of that particular region and the final one that is the orography of that particular region so these four are the major factor that affect the distribution of precipitation or we can say the precipitation region well so discussing in detail that in the first one that is the location of the region in general circulation pattern the thermal circulation that originates from the sun yes okay now about 40 percent of radiant energy of sun is reflected back from upper surface of the cloud and the remaining 60 percent that are absorbs with the small losses talking about the latitude now near the equator due to higher temperature the evaporation will be more and thus the precipitation is heaviest near the equators and decrease towards the high latitudes okay so we can say the region at equators they have the heaviest precipitation while when latitude get higher and higher this precipitation goes decrease okay now the third factor the distance from a particular moisture source well near the coastlines the precipitation tends to be heavier with increase in the distance from the coast line the moisture in the wind that decreases and thus precipitation also decrease then this decrement or the decrease of precipitation in the northward from the gulf coast is the most marked example for such kind of effect with the distance from the moisture regions or the moisture sources well in general the occurrence of precipitation is more frequent on the lee so well uh, talking about the orography of that particular region the topography barriers like mountains that affect the distribution of rainfall in the region that also we have seen in the previous lecture that when precipitation occur at particular mountain areas the rainfall fall down at leeward's on maximum size where uh, we have already uh, discussed in the previous lecture that the precipitation or the rain that fall down the water that fall down in the particular mountain regions the maximum water is uh, uh, fall down on the windward side wherein leeward side there uh, would be a little precipitation okay so this is the actual example for the orography of the region that in the mountain areas at the windward side the precipitation would be higher and in the leeward side that precipitation would be very little so this is all about that how precipitation is distributed and how it distribute itself with concerning the different factors such as the local of the regions in the general circulation pattern and the latitude the distance from the moisture source and the orograph 
okay now let's discuss about the measurement of rainfall how we can measure the rainfall and why we need to measure the rainfall well we all know that the rainfall is the main source of water and that that particular water we are using for the various various purposes okay so the knowledge of amount of rainfall intensity of rainfall and the distribution of rainfall is extremely useful for the irrigation purpose and this data is also useful for the engineers to design such irrigation system okay now rainfall at particular place can be measured by a particular uh, instrument that is known as the rain gauge okay and this rainfall is usually measured in the centimeters okay we have two different types of known recording rain gauge that is simon's rain gauge and imd that is indian meteorological department standard rain gauge the next is the recording type rain gauge well in the recording type rain gauge we have weighing bucket type rain gauge tipping bucket type rain gauge and float type rain gauge so we are starting with non recording type rain gauge wherein we will discuss in the simons rain gauge for the simon rain gauge we have a cylindrical metal case with the internal diameter of 127 mm okay the base of 210 mm the metal casing uh, is 6 600 by 600 by 600 mm this dimension may vary somewhere okay uh, the funnel with a circular rim of 127 mm while the glass tube of 75 to 100 mm diameter okay so these are the few of uh, dimensions of simon's rain gauge which is already mentioned uh, in the figure now talking about the simon's rain gauge okay in this rain gauge the rain gauge is kept open in open area okay now the rain falling into the funnel is collected in the receiver the rainfall in india is generally measured every day at 8:30 hours that is indian standard time and the receiver with the rain water in it is taken out of the metal casing then the rainfall depth should be measured with a special measuring glass there this should be measured in millimeter this can be a measure up to 12.5 cm of rainfall only okay now during heavy rains the rainfall is measured 3 to 4 times a day just because we have a limitation that we can measure the rainfall till 12.5 cm so if in case there is a heavy rain there may be possibility that we have to measure the rainfall uh, 3 to 4 times per day okay and this gives the depth of rainfall well there should be some important points that we should kept when we are selecting the site to mark or to put a rain gauge station that the first point that we should keep that is the rain gauge site should be an open place as we have talked earlier that this rain gauge should be kept in the open area so the first point whenever you are selecting the site it should be open area the next the distance between the rain gauge and the nearest object that should be at least twice the height of the object so if in case we can say wherever we are fixing this rain gauge okay if the nearest object having the height of 8 meter then the distance should be at least 16 meter from that particular object that 16 meter should be of uh, rain gauge to the particular nearest object okay so this is we should kept in mind that not only the open area is important we have to also maintain this distance now the third point that we should kept in mind that the rain gauge should be at least 30 meter away from the nearby obstruction this is one more important point 
earlier we have discussed that it should be 16 meter but no the minimum distance should be 30 meter away okay so if nearby obstruction is even having the double uh, distance that is 16 meter but no we have to at least kept it for 30 meter understood okay now the fourth point that we should cap that the rain gauge should never be situated on the side or top of a hill and a fence if erected to protect it from cattle that should be so located that the distance of the fence is not less than the twice of that fence okay so if we want to provide a particular fence that is the protection okay if you want to uh, provide that fence then we have to make sure that the height of the fence and the distance from ring gauge to fence should be twice so this was the few criteria whenever you are uh, fixing the ring gauge so starting with the next non recording type ring gauge that is AMD standard rain gauge that is Indian Meteorological Department that is called as a IMD. Talk about this. This is a nothing but the modified version or we can say the modified form of a Simon's rain gauge. This rain gauge consists of a collector with a gunmetal rim. The exposed top surface area of the collector is either 100 centimeter or 200 centimeters square now the collector is fitted over a base which is fixed to a concrete or the masonry work now this both the collector and the base are made of fiberglass the collector can be located to the base by locking the rings the collector has a deep set funnel which discharge water into a polythene and kept inside the base so the capacity of bottle could be uh, 2 4 or 10 liter bus but generally we are using 4 liter capacity bottle for this particular rain gauge and 200 centimeter collector okay so these two things are most commonly used for imd standard rain gauge while discussing about the recording type rain gauge We'll discuss about wing bucket type rain gauges. Well, this is a self recording type, or we can say the automatic type rain gauge, where in this rain gauge the rainwater is collected by a receiver bucket. The bucket rests on a weighing pan of a spring or a lever balance that attached to the weighing machine. Now, the increase in the weight of the bucket due to the addition of the rainwater that caused the platform or we can say that caused the pan to move okay now the moment of platform is transmitted through a system of levers to the pan now this pan makes a trace of the accumulated rainfall on a particular chart that is attached to the drum that revolved by a clock driven mechanism Pro the rainfall record produced by this gauge is in the form of a mass curve of rainfall that we will discuss later uh, the total rainfall is plotted with respect to the time and the slope of the mass curve gives the intensity of rainfall we will discuss about the mass curve uh, in the next lectures but but this is what about the weighing type rain gauges now in the Tipping bucket type rain gauge, we can say this rain gauge consists of two small buckets that placed below the funnel fitted 30 centimeter dial receiver. The bucket is so designed that when 0.25 mm rainfall collects in one bucket, it tips and empties its water into the measuring tube that is below it and at the same time the other bucket is brought under the funnel so the tipping of the bucket that 
actuates an electric circuit which causes a pen to make a mark on a record sheet. Okay, and this record sheet is mounted on a clock driven revolving drum. Now, since each mark on the record sheet corresponds to the 0.25 mm rainfall, so by counting the same, the intensity of rainfall can be determined. Now, the total rainfall as a determined from this record at the end of the day may also be checked by measuring the rainwater that collected in the measuring tube. The next that is the float type rain gauge. Okay, it is this float type rain gauge is also known as the natural siphon type rain gauge. The working of a float type or the we can say the siphon type rain gauge both are similar to the wing bucket type rain gauge. Here a funnel that receives the rainwater which is collected in a rectangle float chamber. A float is provided at the bottom of the chamber. The float then raised as the water level rises in the container and its movement being recorded by a pan that is moving on the recording drum as discussed in the wing bucket type rain gauge. So now when the water level in the float chamber rises so that the float touches the top and the siphon comes into the operation and it releases the water thus all the water in the box is drained out. Now, it gives mask of the rainfall. Okay, Indian standard have adopted float type rain gauge as the standard recording type gauge in India. Okay, so generally we used this float type rain gauge to measure the rainfall data. Okay, I hope student you understand this topic thoroughly. Thank you so much for your kind attention. We'll see you in the next lecture.